All right, so here I am with my crazy brother who came over to visit and uh, unfortunately he was showing me some of his work on prime numbers. He's been tinkering with uh, some Excel spreadsheets and he got me thinking about prime numbers again. Okay, so here we are in my lair. This is a little disastrous. Look around, you know, you got all the crazy stuff. It's a little messy, sorry about that. Um, anyways, uh, we're going to talk about the prime numbers and uh, specifically twin primes, cousin primes, and uh, sexy primes, which is a funny name. All right, so uh, imagine we are going along the numbers line and we arrive at a generic prime number of the form 6k minus 1, like so. We want to see if uh, we can have a twin prime, a cousin prime, or a sexy prime associated with this number. So what do we do? We do first, we add the number 2 to this number. 1, 2. We see we arrive here where we can also have a prime number. So a twin prime can be associated with this original prime number. What happens if we add 4? Then you are 1, 2, 3, 4 right here that number is always going to be a multiple of three so you can't have a cousin prime associated with a, an original prime number of the form 6k minus one what happens if we add the number six? One, two, three, four, five, six. this number is again of the form 6k minus one except it's in a different location so you can have a sexy prime associated with this prime number of the form 6k minus 1. So you can have twin primes and sexy primes associated with this number. Now let's do the same thing with this one. If you add 2, 1, 2, you are here. This number is always going to be a multiple of 3. So you cannot have a twin prime associated with this original prime number of the form 6k plus 1. Let's try it with 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. You're here, and that is a possible prime number. So you can have a cousin prime associated with uh, an original prime number of the form 6k plus 1. What about the number 6? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That can also be a prime number. So you can have a sexy prime associated with this original prime of the form 6k plus 1. So what did I do now? I created a chart that shows what we just talked about. If you're at the point 6k minus 1 here, you can have a twin prime or a sexy prime. If you're at the number 6k plus 1, you can have a cousin prime or a sexy prime. What do we see here? We see that the number 6 repeats. You can have uh, sexy primes in both scenarios, whereas you can only have a twin prime associated with 6k minus 1 and a cousin prime associated with 6k plus 1. So now what I'm going to do is I just showed you that there should be statistically twice as many sexy primes than there are twin primes or cousin primes. And also I showed you that there should be the same amount more or less of twin primes and cousin primes based on the chart we did before. Now I'm going to show you that there sh it shouldn't be exactly twice as many sexy primes. It should be a little bit less and I'm going to show you why. This is the reason. If we do, we, we, we grab the original prime number as 6k plus 1, there's two possibilities. You either have a twin prime and then a cousin prime here or you can have a cousin prime and then a twin prime so you have two possibilities of a twin prime and a cousin prime combined so you have to subtract from the sexy prime probability another additional probability that will um, provide a twin prime consecutively with a cousin prime or vice versa so there, it shouldn't be twice as many sexy primes 
just a little bit less. There, there's a slight possibility that there are an other prime numbers in between the two primes separated by 6. Same thing applies with 6k minus 1, like so. You can have a twin prime and then a, sexy, um, a cousin prime, or a cousin prime and then a twin prime. So those probabilities have to t be taken away from the probability of having a sexy prime, or not even a sexy prime, a prime number separated by 6. So we have statistically shown that a sexy prime has to happen at least more times than twin primes and cousin primes, but not quite twice as many times as those numbers. All right, in this uh, next segment of the video, we're going to show you how twin, cousin, and sexy primes behave uh, statistically. Um, what I did here, I'll show you pretty quick, is I have the uh, uh, a sequence of the first million prime numbers, and then I calculated the difference between any two uh, sequential uh, prime numbers. So here, for example, between uh, 3 and 5, obviously we have a, a gap of 2. Between 5 and 7, another gap of 2. Between 23 and 29, uh, there's a gap of 6. I then calculated the uh, cumulative count of uh, all these different intervals. So you'll notice here there are the columns. This is going to be for counts uh, for gaps of two, for gaps of four and six. So it's uh, twin cousin and sexy primes. So let's pick uh, the prime number, yeah, 53. By this time we have six twin primes, five cousin primes, and so far three uh, sexy primes. Now I did that all along the number line. Um, for the first million prime numbers, so up to the prime number uh, 15 million and change. And so far we have a count uh, right here. Twin primes is going to be 86,027. Uh, cousin primes is 85,832. And sexy primes is 146,518 so far. Now I did that also for uh, all the sequences uh, of a million each up to the first 20 millionth prime number. Uh, as you'll notice here, this is the one I just showed you. We have cousin, twins, and sexy primes. Now down here, um, the 20 millionth, sequ uh, 20 millionth prime number, which is a 20th sequence that it did, we have 1.4 million twin primes, 1.4 million cousin primes, and change a slight difference, but not too much. And uh, sexy primes, we have 2.5 million. Now, as uh, you'll notice, this shows, as my brother explained, that uh, uh, sexy primes will grow at almost twice uh, the rate that uh, twin and cousin primes grow. Or, in other words, there's going to be almost twice as many uh, sexy primes as there are twin and cousin primes, but not quite twice as many. So here's a ratio that I calculated for sexy primes to twin primes, and as you'll see, it's 1.76. And a ratio of sexy to cousin primes is uh, 1.76. Okay, and this uh, third and final segment of the video is just a little side note on not being able to prove the twin prime conjecture. Now I have the same table uh, here that I showed you earlier, which has the first million prime numbers and the cumulative count of twin, cousin, and sexy primes. Now uh, naturally what I wanted to do is to lay this out on a graph and see what it looks like. Now here's actually the first uh, 100,000 prime numbers up to the prime number 1.2 million. Uh, this green line right here is the cumulative count of sexy primes. And then overlaid here are two lines, uh, red and blue, which are twin and cousin primes. Now the twin prime conjecture holds. That would mean that the slope of uh, this line would never reach zero. Um, let me show you a little shortcut that I had to take because it's so cumbersome to graph uh, a million prime numbers, let alone 20 million. Um, the shortcut is actually calculating the slope of uh, sequences of a million prime numbers each up to the first 20 millionth prime number. Now, as you can see here, here we have the slope um, in this column of the twin primes. Here's the cousin prime slope, and here's the sexy prime slope. Now the twin uh, prime slope starts off the, with 0.08 and it ends up with 0.06 and you can see here a clear tendency for a diminishing slope. Uh, twin primes also start, sorry, cousin primes also start off at 0.08 and end up at 0.06 also with a diminishing slope. 
and sexy primes finally uh, starts off with a slope of 0.14 and ends up at 0.11. Now the big uh, question is uh, what happens as you go up the number line? Will this slope ever reach zero? But of course Excel is only so powerful and it will take forever to calculate that. So I'll leave it up to you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.